amazing energy. Take your seat, sit on down. I love seeing a sea of your beautiful faces just a smiling at me. Thank y'all for coming to see about me and allow me to just look y'all on the side your head. Y'all got the energy in this place today. Oh, I love it. Oh my God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now today, I have two mugs. And it says be the change, so check out my mugs today. They twinning out, you see them? It's one for me. It's one for you, but baby, ain't nothing in your cup yet. <laughs> I got some in mine. I should probably have some little good old mint tea, maybe some Starbucks or something. But I'm gonna take my sip, hold the line, y'all. <sighs> you ain't want none, did you? <laughs> you know what? They say that everybody has a twin, yeah. right? Yeah. Who you think I look like? I'm curious to know what y'all think. But apparently, everybody seems to think that I look like Megan the Stallion. Yeah. yeah. Do you think so? <laughs> oh my God! I remember my son them and all his cousins like, "You look like Megan the Stallion." I was like, "Wait, what?" And then they showed me, and I was like, "Oh, well." I guess we do maybe favor. And another one I get a lot is Coco Jones. You know Coco Jones? Yeah. Apparently this is my twin too. I get to be the auntie of, of them all I see. But um, they're beautiful girls, so I'll take it as a compliment. Work it, little sisters, work it. That's all I gotta say. And then one time I was walking around with my, my friend Walter, and apparently I was, I'm, first of all, I'm never Jennifer Hudson. Anytime people see me, they call me either Megan Thee Stallion or Coco Jones. So one time I'm walking around with my best friend, Walton. We go everywhere together. And someone thought he was Kevin Hart. <laughs> he was Kevin Hart. So, so this is Walter. <laughs> and then when him and Kevin Hart met, they're, they're both kind of Troy. <laughs> and believe it or not, Kevin is taller than Walter. And he went in circles around Walter like, ha, 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 I'm taller than you. <laughs> And he is actually taller than Walter. And Walter been that same height since we were in high school, because we grew up together, okay? And he was, he gonna be mad, he backstage, y'all. He was my prom date, and I've always been this tall. That's the other thing I get. The number one thing I get is, Jennifer, you're so tall, right? But Walter's a little short. <laughs> Don't kill me, Walter, I love you. <laughs> so he was my prom date, and he didn't want to stand up, so. He had, I had, uh, he said it, we had to sit down and take our prom picture is what I'm saying. <laughs> but that's all right. Anyway, anybody in here feel like y'all look like somebody? I wanna hear some of y'all's. <laughs> Talk to me. Hello. Hi. What's your name and where are you from? My name's Netta, I'm from Los Angeles. Mm. <laughs> I'm trying to see. Who do people say you look like? I get stopped all the time. People think I look like Liza Koshy. Oh. The YouTube star. Yeah, what y'all think? Oh my God! Okay, that is a very good one right there. Yeah, people stop me all the time. One time I was at an airport waiting to board a flight and a whole bunch of people crowded around me and they were like, are you Liza Koshy? And she wasn't really big yet, I didn't know her. She's a YouTube star. Uh -huh. And uh, everyone else started recognized me and thought the same thing. And I'm like, no. But now she's really big, so I know exactly who she is. She co-hosted the Rockin' New Year's Eve. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> OK. Let's see. Anyone else? Hello. Hi. What's your name and where are you from? Barbara from Irvine, California. Hi, Barbara. <laughs> I'm trying to see if I can see it already. OK. Who do people say you look like? I get stopped almost every day for being Naomi Osaka. <laughs> Girl? Wow! Do y'all see it? I see it. Okay, so I know you have. Do you ever make like you have? <laughs> no. I, I play basketball, but oh. um, I try and play tennis here and there. <laughs> but no, not as good as her. <laughs> y'all do favor a lot. Girl, you better go get your money. All right. <laughs> Anybody else? Hello, what's your name and where are you from? I'm Caitlin, I'm from Arizona. Nice. I'm trying to see if I see it. Who do you get? Troy Ann Belisario oh. from Pretty Little Liars. She played Spencer. Oh. <laughs> Yo, do you see this? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. 
I, I would get stopped a million times, especially when the show was like first airing. And we were at the same event one time and a girl came up to me and she's like, oh my gosh, you look just like her. You guys need to meet. She needs to see this. And she brought her up to me and I think it freaked her out. <laughs> Cause she was just, we were just like staring at each other. Like, okay, this is weird. <laughs> Y'all be sure you're not related? I know, maybe. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, uh, give me one more. Hello. Hello. What's your name and where are you from? Jackie from Portland, originally from Portland, Oregon. Portland, Oregon. <laughs> I'm trying to see if I see it. Okay, who do you get? I get Tay Diggs. You do? I do. I do. Oh, wow. <laughs> I can see it. Y'all see it? <laughs> wow. So, do you ever make like you him? Uh, no, but I was once in the grocery store and a little girl asked, um, was riding with her mom and she said, oh, isn't that the guy from um, the best, best man movie? And her mom looked at me and said, no, he's too short. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Listen, well, I do the opposite. So every now and then somebody will say, one time I was in New York and it was when my son was little. Now I talk to you, you know, I, I love people. That's why I'm sitting here. But sometimes, you know, you go out, and one time I was at the, at the mall, and it was me, my son, and maybe my sister, and I got this from Juju, messing with Juju, and the people were in the store, and everybody was like, oh my God, that's Jennifer Hudson. Oh my God, and I could hear them like, that's Jennifer So what I did was I was like, where's she at? Oh my God, I want to meet her too. <laughs> and I was able to run off to, you know, and go try to find Jennifer along with them, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> the thing is, if you say, well, you look like her, you know what, child? Everybody say that. You know what I mean? But if you say, are you Jennifer? Yes, ma'am, I am. How are you? Nice to meet you. How are you doing? So thank y'all for sharing that with us. We got a great show. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Our first guest has been acting for over 50 years now. She's also a producer, singer, and one of the nicest women in town. Please welcome Rita Wilson. Yes! 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 <laughs> you got the energy, too. <laughs> well, it's so much fun. You're bringing all the energy. Thank what you. What could be bad about yes. this? This is the happy <laughs> day. So you've been acting for over 50 years. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You said, yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on, Jennifer. <laughs> let me, <laughs> let me just, what'd you say there? <laughs> Um, yes, I've been acting 50 years because I started when I was 15. 15? Yeah, I'm born and raised in LA, born and raised in Hollywood, as a matter of fact. Oh my God. And my first gig was The Brady Bunch. The Brady, I love The Brady Bunch. <laughs> so you were 15 here? Yes. <laughs> what was that like? It was incredible because, you know, I was obsessed with Maureen McCormick, Marsha Brady. I wanted to look like her, clearly. Oh my God. And, um, and it was so much fun meeting them and, and working. And that day that we were shooting, one of the days we were shooting, the woman who played um, Bewitch, Samantha, Elizabeth so Montgomery, cool. she came to visit the set. Oh my goodness. So it was very fun. Those it was classic very... shows, that is I know, amazing. I, I can't know. believe I get to meet somebody who was on the Brady Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> I watch that show like every Sunday when it is the full church. Oh, okay. Exactly, exactly. Love that show. You grew up in Hollywood. And then you ended up getting your start on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In the, in the same area you grew up in? That's yeah. amazing. So I grew up in Hollywood, California. I'm a first generation American. My dad was from Bulgaria. My mom was from Greece. But it was like anybody's main street. It just happened to be Hollywood Boulevard. And your dad has an incredible story. He's yeah. an immigrant. He, incredible story. So. My parents, <laughs> my parents, um, my dad escaped communist uh, Bulgaria after the war. He tried three times to get out. They caught him each time. And they said, the last time, if we catch you, you're going to become an enemy of the state. And they put him into a labor camp that was one of the harshest labor camps in Bulgaria at that time. And he managed to escape the labor camp. And he took a friend with them and they didn't get caught. And uh, they did it because he got on a night shift mm. to, it was a coal mining labor camp. And he, he saw that trains would come in and he knew that if he worked at night, 
a train would come in, he could get past the train on the other side, which was a river, and run and escape. And that's what he was able to do. And he made his way. Yeah. That there he is. is. Really something. And that's your dad there. Yeah. yeah. That's powerful. And you found out you had a brother that you never knew about. Yeah. So I did this show called Who Do, we, Who Do You Think You Are? Uh -huh. And it's a genealogy show. And when uh, they took me to Bulgaria, I found out that my dad had had a son, a first child, and his name was Emil. And um, the thing that was so interesting about that was that Emil was born on December 26th. My dad never told us any of this. I think it was just too painful. I think it's right. also one of the reasons why he left. And my sister's firstborn child was born on December 26th. And my son, Truman, was born on December 26th. And I think about my dad, all of those Christmases yeah. and the next day, yeah. thinking about his own firstborn, Emil. So it's pretty um, amazing. And I, I think of that. I, I, Emil passed away when he was four months old. And Emil's mom died three days after he was born. So it was a very tragic story. And oh. I think my dad just felt very much like he wanted to not, you know, remember that so much. Wow. It's impactful yes. to have the legacy through your child. And, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and it's so true. And there's something about, like, nowadays when everybody is talking about everything and, and they put all of their lives out there, there's something very uh, poignant about just keeping it to yourself and, and uh, dealing with it privately. I understand that. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, wow. I, I, I think so too. Thank you for sharing that with You're, us. Well, thank you. We appreciate <laughs> thank you for asking. I appreciate that. The Oscars, you're Oscar pro, right? You've been to the Oscar many times. Oh my, God. oh, my God. Do you have a, a favorite memory from the Oscars? Well, I just remember the first time it was the 80s, and Tom and I were going, and I had this really cute dress that was very popular in the 80s. You guys might remember it, where it would have a waistline, but then it would have a poof. I like it. OK, a poof. <laughs> And I was like, I loved that poof. I was like, I'm so happening with my poof. <laughs> and in the day, they used to send like a big stretch limousine for you and they would fill it with a bottle of champagne. Uh -huh. So we were having a blast or drinking champagne, going to the Oscars, celebrating. And then all of a sudden it's like, I need to make a pit stop. Uh -oh. And it's like, okay, I'm gonna do that. And then I realized that my dress could not be scooped up. It had to be unzipped. So we pull over into this me little Mexican restaurant on Pico Boulevard, and I'm like, Tom, you need to come with me. And so he came with me into the woman's bathroom, unzipped me, zipped me back up. Oh my God, <laughs> that is so funny. Will you stick around for a little bit? Of course. All right, Lola well, Rita will be right back. Hi. Well, we wanted to properly introduce ourselves because you know we're going to be neighbors and everything. So, yeah. so. Okay. Okay. Bye. Are you always this unfriendly? I'm not unfriendly. Okay, you're not. No, 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 no. You're not unfriendly. Every word you say is like a warm cuddle. <laughs> We're back with Rita Wilson. That's a man called Otto. Yes. Tom Hanks is your husband and he's yeah. in it, your producer. Yeah. And happy 35th anniversary. It's coming up, 35th, yes. yes. That is beautiful. Thank you. Can you tell everyone what Otto is about? OK, so uh, A Man Called Otto is a fantastic um, movie based on a book called A Man Called Uvo that was a best-selling book here in the United States, and it was uh, translated into 44 languages, and it also was based on a Swedish film of the same name, A Man Called Uva. And I saw the Swedish film, and I fell in love with it because it was about hope. It was about seeing beyond what people present to really that there might be something else going on in their lives, right. and that when people are... The way difficult and cranky is because they might have something else going on in their lives. So I saw this story. I thought it was so beautiful. I, I looked over at Tom, who was watching it with me, and I was like, I, 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 I got to make this movie, and you should star in it. And he kind of didn't say no. He didn't say anything, because if he had said something, he would have said, I don't think so. No, that's not going to happen, you know. <laughs> but he didn't say anything. So the next day, I got up, 
I reached out, found out who had the rights, met with him. He happened to be in L.A., mm. Frederick, my partner, and uh, we ended up getting the rights and making the movie to it, and that's what we Congratulations! Thank you. And you're also a songwriter and the singer, and you wrote the theme song, Till Your Home. Yes, I wrote the song Till Your Home with David Hodges, and uh, it's sung in the movie at the end credits with me and Sebastian Yatra, Ooh. who you guys would know because he sang Dos Oruguitos in Encanto. He's got the most divine voice, but he's an incredible Latin pop singer. He's won two Latin Grammys this nice. year. He's, you know, just fantastic. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Very, I'm very proud of it. I'm very, very proud of it. As you should be. Thank and you. And you also have an album of duets where you're singing with some amazing <laughs> people, Josh Grober and Smokey Robinson. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Like... It's an incredible experience. I have to say, though, like, it's... When you work with people like Smokey Robinson yeah. or Willie Nelson, who's on the album, Ooh. or Jackson Brown, one of my songwriting like icons, but Smokey, working with him is unbelievable. You know, he's written himself over 4,000 songs. 4,000. 4,000 songs. I got to get home right now and start writing. Yes, 4,000 songs. And I grew up on his music. Yeah. So that was nerve wracking to perform with him. I was wondering, <laughs> and, and did you guys write together? No, but I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest that. You Jennifer should. Jennifer says we should write Read together. Don't sleep smoking. on it. You have yeah. to write. That I'm would gonna... be amazing. I know. You already sang it. Now you need to write with him. Okay. I okay. said it first. <laughs> so you heard it here first. That's right. Will you come back and see us? Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you. And man call in theaters now and will be available to stream soon. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm so happy our next guest is back today because Valentine's Day is over and the singles are ready to mingle. Yes, they are. She's here to help all the singles out there navigate every stage of the dating journey. Please welcome the creator of Confessions of a Serial Dater in L.A., Monique Kelly. Come on out, girl. Good to have you back. Thank you. Can you tell everyone what your blog is about, those that missed it last time? Okay, so first of all, I just love being here. Your audience, the energy is amazing. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so, basically, I started my blog anonymously mm -hmm. after I got divorced. And I started chronicling the ins and outs of dating, and particularly in L.A. Okay, okay. dating anywhere is hard, but L.A. is a whole different It's beast. a different ballgame. Okay, L.A.'s oh, okay. next level, okay? So, started chronicling it and talked about the ups and downs of dating. It was very therapeutic for me. And ultimately, women started coming to my blog because they felt like it was a safe space. They felt seen, they felt heard. Mm -hmm. And it ultimately became a women's dating empowerment movement where I was able to help people through all of my stories and also gain knowledge from them. Right. Yep. So you can help each other. Exactly, that's Ooh. what it's all about, helping each other. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, what was one of the biggest lessons you learned stepping back into the single life? So I think it's important for all singles to realize that you need to embrace wherever you are in the journey, okay? Mm -hmm. Because being single, it's a journey. And you never know what's going to happen. There's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be twists and turns. And <laughs> there used to be this negative connotation about being single, okay? Mm -hmm. If a single person had a dollar for every single time they heard someone say, you're beautiful or handsome, smart, successful. Why are you single? Are you single? Okay, we will be We've all rich, heard that okay? one. Okay? <laughs> right. That's a question that comes up all the time. And here's something important to remember. Not every person that is single is unhappy. There are people that are enjoying their single life and they're happy about it. That okay? is true. Okay? Yes. But on the flip side, there are people who suffer from dating depression. Mm. They're over it. So it's important wherever you are in that spectrum that you embrace it and you're honest with yourself about it. Okay. So what is like, I guess, single depression? What yes. Okay. Single depression, it's so real, Jennifer, okay? <laughs> because there are people out there, they have manifested, they have prayed, they have done their vision board, they're meditating, okay? Yes. They're doing the Reiki healers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They have done it all, okay? Uh -huh. And they are over being single. They are like, where is my boo, okay? Right. And it's exhausting. And sometimes it gets overwhelming. You're longing for this person, you're waiting for this person. 
And I don't know where this myth came up that just because you're having a dating depression moment, that somehow that means you're not living your best life. Right. Or you're not independent. It's called having a human moment. And human moments do happen. So it's so important that when you're having that moment, not only are you being honest with yourself, but reach out to your girlfriends, have them over for some wine and some chit chat, smack talking, or it's very important to remember, therapy is self-care. So when you're in that dark place of single depression, it's okay to reach out and also get therapy. Mm, Y'all hear that? That's right. Yeah. Okay, you also mentioned other stages of singledom. Yeah. What, what are some of the other stages? Okay, this is an important stage, the newly single. A lot of people are coming out of relationships, whether it's divorces, long-term relationships, mm -hmm. relationships that they, they thought were gonna be long-term that ended up not being that. So I find, especially as women get older, when you break up with someone, a lot of times it's even more painful because you're so hard on yourself because you're like, I'm older now, I should have known better, I was divorced, how did I let this happen again in a relationship? And you're really hard on yourself and you beat yourself up. So there's a few things to recognize no matter what age you are when you're newly single. Okay. First of all, it's super important that you don't fantasize about what you thought the relationship was going to be, mm. okay? That happens a lot. Another thing that's important is that <laughs> you remember why you all broke up. Because it's super easy to think about the good times, you know, when he was doing everything he was supposed to be doing, you know, and all that. And also therapy. If you find yourself going in that deep rabbit hole, it's okay to seek therapy. I'm all, therapy is super important in these times when you're dealing with this as well. Okay. <laughs> Take those notes, guys. Okay, what if you're past the newly single stage? How should people approach dating again? I love this part. I call it the newly boot up because okay. ultimately, that's what you want, right? Yeah. If, if you're looking for a relationship and you meet someone, it's a beautiful thing, so embrace that because we'll talk about this in a minute. Situationships, mm. you know, we want to make sure you're not in a situationship. But we're gonna have to get into we're gonna get into that, that okay? Yes. But when you're newly booed up, a lot of times I find women in particular, we like, okay, you know, everything's going good. <laughs> Let me, you know, the other shoe's gonna drop. This is too good to be true. And instead of embracing and enjoying the new beginnings of a new boo. You busy waiting for the other shoe to drop. You're not enjoying it. Now, I think it's important to have those conversations, make sure you're on the same page, make sure you're being honest with each other, but enjoy it, okay? Mm -hmm. So can we talk about situationships now? For a lot of women you, and men, mm -hmm. you find yourselves in situationships. Okay. So like the late, great Dr. Maya Angelou once said, mm -hmm. when someone shows you who they are, believe them. Okay? Social food. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So <laughs> if you start dating someone and they tell you very clearly, I am not looking for a relationship, I do not want anything serious, right. and that is something that you are very clear that that is what you want, it doesn't make that person a bad person that they have made that clear. Because in a situation, one person in that relationship is happy because they're getting everything they want without having to do anything about it. Whereas mm -hmm. someone else is hoping it's going to change. So when someone tells you that you have clear information, you set those boundaries and you keep it moving if a relationship is what you want. And most importantly, don't be afraid to have those conversations. I'm not telling you to have your wedding gown in your purse on the first and second date, okay? I'm not saying that, okay? But what I am saying is have an organic conversation about where you guys are, what you're looking for. Don't be afraid that you might get an answer you don't want to hear because that's better than finding yourself in what you thought was a relationship. That's a situationship, not going anywhere. So have those conversations. You see, I'm listening. <laughs> okay. All right. I think a, and a, a few people in the audience have some questions. We'll get into that in a little bit. We'll be right back. Monique, a few of our audience members have questions about navigating the single life. Ooh. So. Who's first? Because I know I got my questions, so I know y'all got you. Hey, girl. <laughs> hey. How you doing? Wonderful. <laughs> um, I'm Alexis. I'm from Los Angeles. All right. Hi, Alexis. Hi. Sorry. And my question is, uh, what do you recommend for singles in their 20s to do to cope with any triggers due to Valentine's Day and how we see it on social media? Oh, let's talk about that. Let's talk about social media, OK? <laughs> When you know, whether it's Valentine's Day or a random Wednesday, that you are having a moment where you are just 
you might be having a little bit of dating depression or you're just having a little bit of anxiety, do not go to social media. Mm. Social media is not your friend. What's gonna happen is you're gonna start gravitating towards everything that everyone else has that you don't and you start focusing on the negative. So it's so important that when you're having that moment and you know Valentine's Day, if it's a trigger for you, you know that. So stay off social media for a little bit and also start doing things that make you happy, doing a hobby that you enjoy, going out with friends and having a good time and just putting the focus back on you. But stay off that social media, stay off. You hear that? <laughs> Good tip. Yes. Who's next? What's your name and where are you from? Hi, my name is Renee. I'm from Oakland. All right. Renee. So my question is, I would like to date more, but it's difficult balancing out my career and my personal life. How can I find someone if I just don't have the time? Well, first of all, birthday girl, happy birthday. Yeah, I, like, I see a crowd. <laughs> Happy birthday. Oh, and two, and two more. Oh, yeah. happy, wow. birthday, happy ladies. birthday, ladies. <laughs> so I think, first of all, it's so important in the same way that you have scheduled time to be here and hang with this iconic, fabulous woman. OK? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. In the same way you schedule business meetings, if you have kids, in the same way you schedule play dates, you have to make the time to date. Do not hide behind your career as a reason for why you're not dating. You make the time, you set aside. If you need to schedule it and put it in your calendar, set a reminder, okay, this is the time I'm gonna set up a dating profile. This is the time I'm gonna go out with friends for drinks. This is the time I'm gonna give that guy a call back. Make the time to do it. You make time to do what you wanna do. So make sure, just schedule it. Point blank period. There's a will, there is a way. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. I'm learning. Yep. Yeah. Who else? <laughs> What's your name and where are you from? Hi, I'm Caitlin. I'm from Orange County. So, uh, so my glory single days are a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. I am happily married. Just welcomed my first child a few months ago. Congratulations. And, uh, and I just have a question. Uh, what advice do you have for couples to help find a healthy balance between work, between being a parent between uh, finding you know, time for their partner and also just time for yourself. Oh, well, first of all, congratulations on the baby. Yes. That's amazing. I love that. And I think what happens with couples a lot of times, you forget how to date and keep it sexy in the way, you know, when we're single, we will send sexy text messages, you know, and you're married, you can take it up a notch. You know, put on some lingerie, take a picture and send it to your man during the day. Get him excited about things throughout the day so he knows he has something to look forward to later on. Also, do things together, whether it is exercising, going to the gym together, you're doing two things at one time. You're getting healthy and you're working out together and doing things at home together. Sometimes you don't necessarily have the time to go out. So, you know, Netflix and chilling like you would when you're mm. single, doing some cooking together, but keeping it sexy in the same way that you did when you were dating to get him and to have that baby. <laughs> I like that. Okay, that was yes. real good. Thank you so much, Wendy, for being here. Will you come back and see us? I would love to. I want all that yes. advice. Yes. Thank you. To learn more about Monique and her blog, visit our website, JenniferHudsonShow.com. We'll be right back. Our next guest is a 13-year-old rapper and actor starring in his own Nickelodeon show called Tyler Perry's Young Dylan. Take a look. So, I saw you and Tara at the dance. Are you two booed up? Ooh, 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 ooh. Nah, Corey asked her out after the dance. Oh. I guess that means you have a shot at Bethany now, huh? Exactly. When the door closes, a window opens. And sometimes, when the window closes, it pops the door back open. So, I'll be getting that day with Bethany soon. Watch. Oh, look who it is. It's the future Mrs. Young Dylan. Let me holla at you. Hold on, Mwah, mwah. <laughs> Please welcome Young Dylan. A whole mood. Thank you so much. It is so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thanks for having me. I love that swag you came out here with. Thank you so much. Well, you know. That's your good mood. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Wow. So you went viral at a real young age. What song was it? It was uh, Bryson Tiller's Don't. It was very popular at that time. 
and you know, I just came from getting a haircut. My father was recording me. Yeah. Just like a regular day, you know. But I was six, seven. I was in um, kindergarten, first grade, but I didn't really know what viral was at that time. Uh -huh. So I was very confused. But I was like, hmm, a lot of people know me now. That's cool. <laughs> but thinking back on it. It, that was really a big deal, and uh -huh. it's crazy to see that because that basically started my whole career. Yeah, like you were just simply being you, and I was just sitting here looking like, wow, from this moment, and now look at you. You're doing huge, major things. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And you have a new song called TikTok? Yeah, hit them with a TikTok. Hit them with a TikTok. Oh, that's how it go. Yes, my new single, it just came out. Um, You know, it just got 250,000 streams. Oh my God. And that is truly a blessing. My first song to ever come out. And it was really cool seeing that. And I love just making kids happy, people listening to my song and getting a good feeling. That's amazing. And where do you, where you think, where you attribute your talent to? Does your parents do this? Like, your personality, where does it come from? It was just my personality. I always had a dream of being an actor, rapper, football player. And, you know, I was always entertained. I always wanted the crowd to look at me. I always wanted to sing songs, you know. So I, I just, I feel like it was just in my blood. But none of my family members do this. I'm the only one, and that's wow. really cool. Wow. Do you have siblings? No, ma'am. I'm my only child. Your only child? Yes. So that's how you entertain yourself. Yeah. OK. Can you freestyle for us? You know the vibe. Oh, that, he said definitely. you know the vibe. OK, son. <laughs> All right, look. <laughs> Selling out roles, TV shows. I was born a star. I just got that glow. Buy a video from my iPhone 4. Once I drop this music, then I got game over. Oh. Man, oh. young and seeing me, I'm YD, MGC. I spit it off the memory. The crib look like an embassy. My energy, the energy that keep me in the century. Girls think I'm Memphis because I bag every 10 I see. A hundred pair of Pumas like I bought them for a centipede. Oh. I just set the tables for my dogs and we finna eat. Thanksgiving dinner, wrist chili like a winter breeze. It goes its own entity. And everybody, give it up and congratulate Miss J. Hud on the season two renewal. You are a superstar, babe. You are amazing. Thank you. So you just flow off the top of your head? Yes, ma'am. You know, I have a lot of freestyles, you know, music coming. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. And then you just finished the first tour, like visiting schools or? Yes, it was crazy. You know, this is my first tour, or this is my first tour. And it just really made me excited. And I feel like this is um, getting me started for like my next tour when I grow up and become a more bigger, bigger rapper in a big tour, arenas and stuff like that. So I feel like this is definitely giving me experience. You better have a vision. Yes, and it, I just love seeing kids happy to listen to my music and seeing me on the stage. And it just makes me so happy. It, wow, you make us happy thank with you, everything you're doing. You. And Tyler Perry surprised you with your own show. How amazing is that? Did you ever think you would have your own show? No, I, I thought I was just going to be a musician, you know? But then I was spreading my horizons. I wanted to be an actor already, but it was just crazy. And, you know, being produced by Tyler Perry is such an amazing feeling because yeah. he did so much, and yes. he's just so inspirational. And, um, you know, filming Young Dylan, it's about a kid. Uh, he moves in with his aunt and uncle and his two cousins, and he basically turned their lives upside down. He's a, he's a rapper, aspire rapper. And, you know, it's Dylan, but like Dylan, it's, it's, it's the same Dylan, because both of <laughs> us are rappers. But, you know, just living with a different family and the cast members, we're all like a big family. And it's just amazing feeling having this, and it's truly a blessing. Man. What I love about you, you got your head on right, as we older people say. You got your head on right. I know your parents are proud of you. Yes, What definitely. do they have to say about all your success? They, they are just shocked. They are? You know, um, it, it's amazing seeing my parents happy. I'm, I'm making them happy. And that, that makes me proud also, because I feel like I'm doing something right as a son to them. And it's just such an amazing feeling, you know, coming home every day to a welcoming family. That's beautiful, as every kid should have. Mm -hmm. And then that's still not enough. Tell us about the Kids Tonight Show. The Kids Tonight Show, produced by Jimmy Fallon. Um, it's basically like the Tonight Show, but just kidified. We have candy everywhere, ball pits. And it's not just me as the host, it's three other hosts, Michael, Michelle, Record, and Olivia. And we just have so much energy and we bring something different to the show. And we interview different celebrities every day. And it's so cool because we eat candy, we play games with the celebrities. It's really fun. <laughs> I get to be a real kid. I love you. Kid. We are so proud of you. We can't, you. I know you're going to do even greater things. Will yes. you stop by and see us next time? Yes, definitely. The definitely. bigger you get, okay, I'm going to hold you to it. All right, I give me five for that. Okay, cool. you can catch Tyler Perry's Young Dylan on Nickelodeon on Saturdays at 7 p.m.
We'll be right back. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch four episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.